Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part three of my three part series on how to create Hershey Nugget Treats featuring the Let It Snow Sweep by Stampin' Up. In the first part of the series, I showed you how to create the toppers for the treats out of designer series paper. <clears throat> we also created wrappers for our Hershey Nuggets out of designer series paper. And lastly, I showed you how to cut the patterned paper. We cut the little hats and the holly out for the snowman. In the second part of the series, we worked with stamped images and we cut out the snowman we need for the project and the let it snow sentiments. We stamped the sentiments, we stamped the snowmen, I showed you how to color them, and your homework was to get all of your parts ready because in this tutorial, we're gonna work with cardstock. We're going to be making, in part three, the trays that hold the nuggets, and we're gonna be making the circles that go behind the stamp sentiment. And then finally, we're gonna assemble all the pieces that you prepared as part of your homework. So let's get to it. I'm using the CM350 for this series, but you can follow along with whichever model of scan and cut you have. I so far have just loaded my cardstock, that's all I've done. And you're gonna go into pattern. When you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. Select pattern and select the shapes. We wanna select a square, we'll change it to a rectangle. Select the first shape. Okay, uncheck this box here, which means that these the length and width stay in proportion, or not unchecked, just select this box here, select. It has arrows going in two ways. When you select it, now you can change the width and the height independently. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the height first. Okay, we're gonna make the height of the tray not quite five inches. Now I get asked all this time, but I don't have a scan and cut. It doesn't matter, you can still make these Hershey Nugget treats. If you're following along and you have a paper trimmer, just make your tray a smidgen less than five inches. I particularly like 4.95. I have no extra cardstock sticking out at the end of my tray. Five nuggets fit on the tray perfectly when it is 4.95 inches. That's with a lot of experimentation. The width of your tray is going to be 2.25 inches. As I'm always mentioning in my tutorials, you always make more than one. Okay, that's 2.25 inches. So go ahead and let's make two trays. In fact, I would make pages and pages of trays because I'm getting ready for a craft fair. But these, these Hershey nuggets I'm showing you are great for stocking stuffers, gift giving, and all kinds of things. Go ahead and let's put two of those on the mat. Now let's add a few circles for going behind our sentiment because last time we cut a lot of circles out and now you're going to add some circles. So just go ahead and say add. We're gonna add the circles of cardstock that are gonna go behind the Whisper White sentiment. Now go down and select a circle. Scroll down. Everybody has a circle. Doesn't matter. Every machine, every scan and cut has a circle. So find a circle. Do not check this box because the circle you wanna stay in proportion. You don't wanna turn it into an oval. You want it to be a perfect circle. So keep, that, keep all the settings as they are and change the circle to 1.75. So if you recall, we, we stamped the sentiment in 1.5 inches. So now we want the circles to go around the sentiment to be a quarter inch bigger. That's kind of my rule for layering. When you're making cards, when you're making any kinds of crafts, I always just put, I always just make circles. I'm gonna see if we can put four, four or five on there. I'm just gonna see how many will fit on our cardstock. Okay, we'll, we'll try five. We don't want to waste cardstock. I'll show you how to arrange them so they fit better. But anyway, my rule for crafting, by the way, is just always a quarter inch. Each mat, each layer is about a quarter inch bigger than the one before. Okay, so they'll all fit on here. I probably could have even fit more, but let's show you how to arrange them. Now, there, my, my piece of cardstock in this, in this scan and cut right now is an eight and a half by 11. Okay, so I'm just gonna arrange them using this little tool you see this little, it has triangles going in different directions. So if I click on this little triangle button, it will let me do a layout. The first one will just let me, the first layout option is going to orient them in any direction it needs to, to get the most efficiency out of the mat. So I want these, I can't, I can't cut over here right now. 
I only have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So I could have moved the little circle, but I'd rather use this. That button will arrange them in an efficient way. Okay, it's better than me trying to arrange them with my little stylus. And look, now I'm not cutting over on the 11 inch part or the 12 inch part. My, you'll see when I take the mat out that my, that my paper's only 11 inches and that's why I'm arranging them. Okay, so let it do what's called auto arrange. Let it auto arrange. Okay, let's say okay and let's say cut. Now, we're cutting cardstock. I'm using a CN350. So, one more setting, and all this is in the description of the video. So, I keep getting asked about the settings. Please go into the description of the videos. If you're watching a YouTube video and you click on the underneath the title of the video, is the description of the video. And in there, I spend hours and hours writing descriptions, giving you links to further resources. And there is the, the you don't have to write down these settings because they're all in the descriptions of my videos. It might take me an hour to do it, but they're in there. Okay, so turn your blade to a five. Whenever you're using Stampin' Up! cardstock, you know, I'm using blueberry bushel, you're gonna use a blade depth of five. If you're using a SDX machine, it's auto blade. You don't have to worry about blade depth. It, it knows the blade depth automatically. Okay, we'll see you in one minute. Okay, we're finished cutting, we say okay. Now. I'm going to be able to change my camera angle now because we're done with what we need the scan and cut for. So let's just go ahead and say unload the mat and then you're gonna get to see this and you're gonna get to see me assemble these. And do stick around to the end because if you've been watching this whole series and you're wondering what happened to the snowman twins, what happened to the snowman with the top hat and what happened to this, all the different kinds of snowman we made using the stamped, the stamping techniques, then I, you're gonna get to see that coming up. So here's the, here's the uh, cardstock. So you pull this off, pull the piece, and of course we, have, we could have done double the amount, but I didn't want to, just to save time, you know, we didn't have to create too many. So you can get these off the mat, and like that. And again, that, that's the reason I did the auto arrange, because I didn't want to cut into this area. And when you first put circles there, it, they put them over on that area. And I could have also moved them manually. I teach about all these things in my classes, you know, all this more, more into the editing and all that kind of stuff. All right. So now what we need is you're going to need a scoring tool. You can use your, the new, the trimmers are available by the way, to my customers, the paper trimmers, but I'm using simply score cause that's what I like, but our paper trimmer also scores. In fact, I'll just show you that real quick because it was November 1st, our paper trimmers became available to customers. Whoa, I just slammed right into that tripod. <laughs> All right, so my paper trimmer became available and it has a cutting blade and it has a scoring blade. Okay, so you could use your paper trimmer for this if that's all you have. But I like, if you have something that works better, and I'm always about the right tool for the job and my Simply Score just happens to work better for me because it serves as sort of a lap desk when you're, when you're sitting at the, you know, at the, where am I sitting? I'm sitting at the TV is what I'm about to say. Oh no, we don't need them to go that way. I'm sitting at the TV and I'm doing all my work and I just like to use this, this Simply Score because I also have a little lap desk. The Simply Score comes with a scoring tool. So I'm gonna pull that out and it has a big side and a small side. I like to use the small side when I'm scoring cardstock. The small, oh, this side, the smaller, the smaller side. Let me show you that. And I like to use See that? And I like to use the bigger one if I'm trying to make, do paper crafts and flowers and things like that. So that's a bigger side. So let me, let me see if I can't get the angle any better here. Move my, my little Simply Scored around. All right, so I'll, I'll just move it closer for you. And we hope it doesn't fall off the table, just so you get a good view. So it's, we're gonna score, we have, we have these rectangles that are, let me put some nuggets in the picture, just so we get some better lighting. All right, so we're going to score at three eighths of an inch, okay? So you can, you can count over the little notches, one, two, three, three eighths of an inch. And then you're gonna score at one point, you're gonna do, you're gonna do like one and seven eighths of an inch. But what I like to do, this is just how I do it, because I'm watching TV and I like them to be exactly even. So I just like to go three eighths of an inch, and then I, and see there's the score line, and then I like to flip it over and do three eighths of an inch. And that makes it even on both sides because when you, use, when you use this side, it's not quite even as it is lined up over here to the left. So I like to line it up to the left of my 
simply scored. And I like to go three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna flip that around, I'm gonna show you closer. Okay, so you really get a good idea. And you can use whatever scoring tool you have. Say one, two, three eighths of an inch. Okay, there's this inch is broken into eight little score lines. So I'm doing three eighths of an inch. And with the trimmer, I just find it harder to see. And like I said, I'm doing so many of these for craft fairs and it's just mindless. I'm watching TV, I'm scoring, and that's, and that's just how I make my trays. I make loads of trays. I do everything in stages. Okay, so then you take your little spatula and you can use, I'm using just my little Cricut spatula, but you can use your little spatula from your scanning cut, or you can use a bone folder and you need to burnish the end. So we have when we're scoring mountains and valleys. When you score down, it's a valley. But then you're going, after you score down, you're going to fold the paper the opposite way. So then we call that a mountain. So that's a mountain. This is a valley. So you're just gonna score like that. I mean, you're gonna fold it against the way you scored. So there it is. And then you're gonna use your little spatula. So let's use our, you can use your scan and cut spatula, your bone folder. I like to use my Cricut spatula or, you know, cooking spatula. Okay, so there's my little tray. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do that to this one. I'm gonna make two trays to show you. Because then you get a different, you know, then you get better angles of how I'm putting them together. So there's our trays. Now we need to do our toppers. We'll put these off to the side. Save your circles. And our toppers, I told you in our first video to save the toppers. We're going to come back and visit those toppers later. So here are our toppers. We have, you know, you recall they were five inches long. So we were going to, I think that's all I have left. Okay, so we're, and you could use both sides, but I thought... The snowman side was really cute. And I told you to orient the snowman so that so that it was going this way. So when we fold them, see, that's cuter than that side, I think. So we're going to just do, we're going to do the toppers now. And you could do a bunch of toppers at once. Lay them all down here and just score them at two and a half. Because you're just scoring them in half, okay? So you're scoring them. I'll get, I'll get closer for my crafty friends. So you, in case, you know, you maybe you're watching this like, and without audio, I've, I've actually found out some of my viewers watch the videos without audio. So I kind of like to do things visually as well. So you see two and a half. We're scoring at two and a half. Or you know what? Sometimes people watch me and they don't speak English. And then, then, then that's even better that I do a visual. All right. So let's fold this paper like that. Okay. And let me put these nuggets back in there for, for good measure. If, you, if I give you more color in there, it's better. All right, so there we go. So we'll just fold that down. I like to go up to the corners and it keep, really keeps it. That's the other reason I love working with the Simply Squirt because I have the corners and it helps me align things. And it, you know, like it's just a great little place to do your crafting work. It's like my little lap desk. Do all your scoring. Okay, so there are my toppers. So yay, now I can get rid of, now I can make some room on my table. We're done the scoring. We wrapped our nuggets. That was your homework. We wrapped our nuggets. Okay, let's make some room. Now what we're about to do is assemble. So I need to talk about a couple things because I want to talk about coordinating colors and, and where, I've, where I've got to, how I've got here so far. So if you have just one color you're going to get, if that's all you, if you're just making a few of these Hershey Nugget treats, then I recommend getting, if you're just going to get one color of ink, and one color to go with your designer series paper, I recommend blueberry bushel. It's so versatile, okay? And you can do your stamping with it, which is what I showed you. You can make your circles with it. See, there's your circle and blueberry bushel. And you can make your trays with blueberry bushel. If that's one color. If you can't afford any cardstock and you're doing this with just, all you have is the stamp set, then just use black cardstock. If you can't, don't use a color that's not gonna match, okay? You're better off using black or white then you are trying to use a coordinating a color that does not coordinate. But what I did is I used many different colors, and let me show you, um, let me get them here, I have them right here. I used many different colors to coordinate for my trays, okay? So I used real red, let me put this in there, put that in the screen so the colors stay bounced. Real red, um, blueberry bushel, coastal cabana, flirty flamingo, and shaded spruce, okay? I use all kinds of coordinating colors. I want everything to coordinate. So I used all those different ones for my trays. 
I cut loads and loads of 12 by 12 cardstock and I'm making probably hundreds of these. Okay, but I'm stopping, you know, before I go off the grid to make more of these, I was stopping to show my crafty friends. So really, this is how many I made so far. I'm in the, I think I'm up to number six. So I've did five here as I was creating the tutorial and I have, this is one in the making. So what I'm about to do is just show you how to attach the nuggets to the trays. So you need some kind of rolling adhesive and then how to put, the, put them in the bags and the toppers. The bags I'm using are in the description. Again, please look at the description. I get asked this all the time. Where are the bags? Where do you get your bags? And no matter how many times I say it, I'll say it again. They're in the description. That's where I get my bags. All right, so we're gonna use, you can either use snail, rolling adhesive, or you know any kind of thing, but do not, do not, do not use glue. Never attach any food with any liquid glue. You can attach your Santa hats with glue. Do not attach, do not use liquid glue on any food items whatsoever. It could seep into the food items. You need to use a, lick, a, a rolling adhesive. This is my particular one I like to use, but I'll just show you, I'm just gonna make two lines of rolling adhesive onto my trays. Okay, and, but you can use snail. But honestly, I go through a couple rolls of this a day. Like this, I have to use industrial. I, I, I buy like loads and loads of rolling adhesive. I mean, I love snail for my workshops and my students love it. And it's easier to use, but when you do as many crafts and you use rolls and rolls of adhesive, it just, just doesn't, it would run out in five minutes for me. All right, so got your rolling adhesive. Now you're gonna take your nuggets and you're gonna arrange them first on the table. Don't put them in your tray yet, so arrange them. So you want them to be alternate. So we'll just use some, you know, like, let's see, a mitten and then a red one. This is all from the designer series paper and we'll do snowman treat. We'll do a snowman. What happened to them? Oh, maybe there's not enough of those. We'll just do mittens. We'll just do all mittens because there's enough of those. See how I've alternated the way I, the colors and some of them have, some of the nuggets have the little red in them. So I'm trying to use the same kind of nugget. Or here, this one. You might not even notice it. There's just lots of little details I pay attention to, like the kind of nuggets. I alternate the kind of nuggets that are in the trays. All right, so now you can arrange them. Once you get your nuggets arranged on your table, then you can arrange them on your tray, starting with the bottom nugget, okay? So just start, and I, I like to hold my tray shut like this a little bit. That really helps me center my nuggets, okay? It really helps me. So let's put that there. And once you get the bottom nugget, the rest are easy. It's just getting the bottom nugget to adjoin to the tray. Let me put some more color in my video. I'll put one of my other papers up there. Lots of light going on today. Here, we'll put some hats in there. The more color, the better, because you don't get as washed out from the viewer's point of view. All right, where's my rest of my nuggets? So we're gonna do two of those. Again, I would do all my trays at once. So I would do all the trays, I would do all the toppers. All right, there we go. So that one tray is done, yay. We'll give you a little closer look at the next, when I do this one. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing the tray to make sure that they're centered. Okay, and then get the first one right, the rest are easy. You want it to adjoin to the bottom there. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I mean, they just look beautifully lined up like that. And that's why I pay attention to the colors. Like every other color, this is gold, you know, gold, silver, gold, silver. Okay, so I just, I like to pay attention to all the details. I mean, why not? If you if you spend all this time making these, then and make people feel very special, like you really paid attention to the gift you're giving them. And it's not about the gift, and it's not about the cost of your gift. It's about presentation. It's, a, it's the thought that counts, as they say, right? And... So now we've just lined up these. So now we have, now we have our another tray and you know, they stick out. You want them to stick out of the trays. The trays are just to hold them in place and it's nice, but you want them to stick out a little bit. So that's what's great about Hershey Nugget candy, but this does work with other candies from around the world. It's just that Hershey Nuggets work better. All right, now we need our bag. So 
Not all bags are created equal. Stampin' Up retired, unfortunately retired their bags. They used to have two inch bags. Let me show you which one Stampin' Up used to have. And if you're a bag hoarder like I am, I did get a bunch of these before they retired. They were called, and don't go trying to find them. Pay attention, folks. You can't find them. Don't go, oh, well, you may be on eBay, but you know what? You can't find them at my store, so don't be like, hey, you show me something I can't find. I'm telling you you can't find them. They're retired. If you like something I'm showing you, like this Let It Snow Designer Series paper or anything I'm showing you in this whole series, you got to get it while you can because you don't know what's going to be around in the future. So these are gone. They're two-inch bags, but they were made a lot better. So Stampin' Up! made really good quality bags. Okay. So now I'm getting this sort of, these are pretzel rod bags. I'm getting them from Amazon and I, there's a link to where I get them, but they're flimsy. I mean, I'm going to, I'm keeping it real folks. They're flimsy compared to the bags that Stampin' Up! sell. We sell better quality products. Look at the bags. These are, these are strong and you can even use them as acetate windows. They're so strong and these are flimsy. Okay. But Hey, I'm just telling you what I'm using. I'm keeping it real. So you take out a couple bags and there's an adhesive side. Okay, so you're going to chop off the adhesive side. You're chopping this off. And they're also 10 inch, so you don't need a, such a long bag. So go like this. Put your, put your nuggets there and give yourself a little extra for toppers and chop off a couple inches just to work with them. So you can chop off more, more of the bag later. But I just chop off a couple inches. I chop off the adhesive side. Okay. And other people told me, oh, you can go to other companies and blah, blah, blah. You know what? I have Amazon Prime and I'm just going to keep, I'm just going, I'm getting them from here. But get them from wherever you want. I mean, you can find them maybe at a bakery store, not a bakery store, a food preparation, in a craft store at the food, food preparation section. I don't know how adhesive got stuck on that one. We shall see. Here, let's try to get these in there. So you basically just open up the end, shove them in there and keep Keep track if they are facing a certain way make sure you put your tray in the right way okay so like you if you have your nugget like where's my little snowman nugget that one you would make sure that if, if the snowman's or snowmen are oriented like this put them in this way because I, I told you about cutting them in a certain orientation okay so that's how you get them in there and they still look very nice don't get me wrong I, I'm, I, I hate to diss on these bags it's just that when you had a better quality and then they retire them still bitter. Don't retire products that I'm buying like a ton of. I should have been able to personally keep stamping up in business with those bags. But you know what? I guess they weren't selling as much as, or maybe, I don't know why. Maybe just keeping things fresh, we like to retire items. But that's why I like, I've learned my lesson. When I like something, I get a lot of it. <laughs> so it, I can always have it. Okay, so there we go. So there we have our two, our two nuggets trays created and I just need to tilt my camera a bit because it's so bright right now. All right, there we go. So now I'm putting these in the, so now we need to just put the topper on. And this is, they're still a little big, so I just chop them a little bit more to get the topper on there. Meaning, look, if I try to put the topper on, it's too, oh no, no, they're actually okay, but still. The topper needs to, it needs to be a little bit shorter than the topper. So something like that, okay? And do not staple your topper. I mean, honest to God, I saw people doing this after I, after I taught them how to make these and then they stapled their topper. I'm like, no, don't go through all this and then staple your topper. I'm just using a little bit of snail here just because it's handy. Okay, you want a couple lines of rolling adhesive. Okay, so a couple lines, that's all. Because you want them to be able to get the topper off. So put a couple lines of rolling adhesive there. I'll do it one more time so you get a good view. Lay the bag there. Lay the bag into the rolling adhesive. Don't do all this nice work and then use a stapler. I just think, I mean, if you have to use a stapler, that's all you have, fine. But you know what? We've just done all this work with this beautiful specialty glittered and specialty printed designer series paper with coordinating trays, coordinating nuggets. So it's best to use rolling adhesive. All right, where's the other topper? Here's the other topper. And again, you're just keeping in mind that this is the front of the Hershey Nugget Treat, right? You're putting that in the front. Okay, a little bit of snail, a couple lines of rolling adhesive, just a couple lines. They gotta be able to get it off. See, there it is, showing you in the light. Lay that in there. I'm going really tight in there because you want these to stand up. When you're on display, when they're on display, 
You want them to stand up straight in whatever container you have them in. So if you don't put this too tight, if you don't put this too close to the tray, then this tag will flop over. It'll be floppy. And then it won't stand up. And it'll be it'll be a little bit harder to display. All right, so there's our topper. Now we just put the now we get some some dimensionals. So use some foam dimensionals. Let me get a pack. These are stampin' dimensionals, just to foam adhesives. You want you want to pop up your little snowman, and you want to pop up your sentiment. So just one is good. Put one on each of these. These are your outer circles, and then we we stamp the inner circles. Let it snow. I hope this is staying in focus. Okay. Oh, we had to take the take the ends off. Okay, let it snow. And we'll do this one. Let it snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Okay, now for our snowmen that we have put the little hats on. Okay, so here's a snowman that we put the little hat on. I told you to go do your homework and glue it, and I like to put the snowman on that side if his hat is going if the holly's going out that way, that's my particular preference. So now we need a, a dimensional on the back of here and a couple dimensionals on the back of our, I put one there to make sure the hat doesn't fall off. Let me just show you that because this is, I think, I think that might be my last snowman. So I'm just gonna, I have to give you a good view, okay? So I'm giving my crafty friends a good view. It's my last snowman that's decorated, I think. So, but I'll show you my finished product. See, I'm putting one dimensional there to keep, make sure the hat doesn't fall off, even though I use glue on the hat. And I'm putting a second dimensional here at the bottom of my snowman. Now, I like the little arm to overlap the circle, and I like the circle to sort of stick out. So I put the circle sticking out first on this side, the topper, and then I put this side like that, like so, with the arm sticking into the let it snow a little bit and then sticking out the side a little bit. Okay, that's my particular preference and you can just do tons and tons and tons of these. So, let's show you what else you can do. Let me, let me really get in there. <laughs> let me clear my table a bit and just show you a couple other projects and lay these all out. So, you can admire our handiwork of our three-part series and all of the things that you were able to create. So, I showed you how to create extras that I said I said, don't worry that you're creating some extra nugget wrappers. Remember earlier I said, and don't worry if they're going the wrong direction. And I said a bunch of things. And here's why. Because you can, you can create these little treats using just your scalloped, or not scalloped. You can take your extra nuggets and create, using your delightful, delightful tag topper punch, you can create these really fun little snowman treats. And you can even put little mittens on them from the embellishment kit and little scarves on that side if you want. But this is the snowman, if you recall, that I showed you how to stamp the, the hat trick. This is not designer shape paper. This is just a pure stamp snowman. And I said you can use that. And this is curly ribbon, by the way, curly ribbon. So that's a simple little tag topper treat. And inside are the nuggets that are going the other way, the ones that won't work in a tray, like the little like these ones, the ones that are facing the wrong direction. You put them inside the tag topper treat. And you can also put them inside the mini pizza boxes. I'm gonna show you that in our snowman twins and that's how I will conclude the series. So here are the snowman twins and they are on one of our decorated mini pizza boxes. The snowman twins each have different hats that we cut out with the scan and cut. I cut out all the pieces of these pizza boxes with the scan and cut and I do show this many times on my channel. How to cut out mini pizza boxes with the scan and cut. Okay, and there's that glittered paper, and I put Wink of Stella, which is our little glitter pen. Let me show you that in the light. This is a glitter pen, and I put Wink of Stella onto the snowman so that they glimmer. Okay, so that's, that's the mini pizza box project. So you can just do all kinds of things, even if you're not making nugget trays, you can put all kinds of gifts, gift card, or decorate the inside of this box, put more of your nuggets inside the box, and you can come up with lots and lots of things to do with all, this, all the skills you learned in this series about cutting stamped images, cutting patterned paper, and, and assembling your projects. So thank you for watching my series, and let me know what you think in the comments. And please subscribe if you're new here. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.